Hey everybody, this is Chris D from PC Addicts. This video is going to be somewhat of a follow-up to this one right here. It's uh, regarding adding multiple users to your Active Directory all in one shot uh, without having to manually go in there and create each individual one. There's going to be uh, a few different files needed for this and uh, as you can see here on the screen, one of them is going to be new users sent XLS now the reason I named it sent is because to me it's just it's easier to determine which files which when I have them all bundled up in one folder this one to me means this is the file I sent the HR department in order to have them fill out with all the new student accounts um, the next one is returned I just named it returned because that's the one that HR returned back to me with that should have all the user accounts in there and then we're going to save that returned file as a CSV. So we're going to convert it right over to a CSV right through Excel. Um, and that's going to be the file that the PowerShell, the PowerShell script is going to use um, to loop through each user account and create those accounts. It's just like the old video, or if, if you saw the old video. Um, but I, I think it's going to be a lot cleaner here. All right, so let's go over the new users sent spreadsheet that I created that I'm going to be sending out to the HR department. I tried to make it as simple and clean as possible for, and easy for them to understand um, as far as what they need to fill out. Now, I have protected some of the sheet and I have unprotected the, the parts of the cell or the parts of the spreadsheet that they can edit. So, in other words, let's just run through an example. I'm going to put my name in here. First name, Chris. Last name, Davis. Graduating year, um, and this is this is exactly the the same spreadsheet I used um, for a school district that I do some work on the side for, and uh, the way they have their OU structured is by graduating year. So they put their student accounts in the OU that corresponds to what year they're graduating. For example, this one's going to be let's say it's 2013. They're going to be graduating 2013. You can see that as I was filling this in, these parts over here were starting to get filled in automatically. Um, and I will have, I think I'll have the spreadsheet available for you guys to use if you want. Uh, just look for the links down below under the video, or if you don't see one of the video, make sure you head over to the site. Um, I'll have them up at pcx.com. So what this field is going to do, the login username, is just taking the first initial of the first name, and it's taking the whole last name, converting them to lowercase, because I, I don't want, I, I want it standardized in Active Directory where all usernames are lowercase. It's just, um, I'm just crazy that way, I guess. Uh, the name field over here gets filled in by taking the first name, adding a space, and taking the last name and filling in that cell. And then containers where the actual OUs are stored. Um, so here's the domain name, PCA headquarters, or PCA.hq. Then there's a PCA OU, domain user students, and then class. And then what if I take this year out, you'll see that it disappears from this uh, cell over here. So whatever year you're putting in there, 2014, um, it's going to fill it in for you properly. So all the all the HR people have to do is fill in these three fields. Hey, the first name, last name, and graduating year. Let's say we did that already. I'm not going to save that. And let's say HR department was so kind to get back to us fairly quickly here. And here's uh, sample student accounts. You can see the names are, you know, not real names, but I just want to fill it in with some some data. We, we got different years through here. Um, usernames are filled in, the names are filled in, and uh, the containers are filled in. Yeah, you don't have to create the logon username field and the name. You can kind of do all that in the script if you really wanted to, but um, I just wanted my HR department to kind of see what's going on here. Um, and I don't know, I, the way I wrote the script, it just I prefer it here in the spreadsheet. So what you do at this point, and this is before we're even on the server, you can just do this from your client machine, is you want to save it as a CSV, so file, save as, save as a CSV, and you can see I already have it saved here, so I'm not going to resave it again, but you just save it, and you'll have your CSV. What I'm going to do is open this up in Notepad. So if I right click and go edit, you see all the commas. Um, we got our header up here, and all the data, each, each row has the data that corresponds to the header. This is the data we're going to be working with on the server. So what I'm going to do from my desktop here is save all that or control A and copy it. You know, copy, oops, not paste. 
Draw a copy. Let's open up our virtual machine here. Here on my server, I just say I just created a folder on the C drive called it bin, and I'm just working straight out of the bin folder. We have our script and we have our file. Let's just take a look at this file real quick just to make sure we have all the same data. Yep. It's all just the CSV data that we need. So we're done with that right now. We're gonna leave that alone. Now it's on to the script. Let's take a look at the script. Here's what I have in the script. Of course, this is going to be available on the site. So the link to the to the page on the site with the script is going to be in the description below. And basically, what we're doing here is we're importing that CSV, and we just name we just put the path to where that CSV is at. And since it's in the same folder as the script, we don't have to put a path or anything. Uh, we're going to pipe that to for each. I'm creating a variable here. Uh, because when I was testing this before I actually uh, deployed it out at that school district, I had a little problem with, um, I'll show you here in AD, uh, I don't have any user accounts at the moment, I guess we can show you mine. I had a little problem with this user logon name where it wasn't automatically selecting the at PCA headquarters here. And I just, it worked without it, but I wanted it to be in there, so I found out that I'll just create this variable and store the logon username plus I'm concatenating here uh, the at PCA.headquarters and I'll just store that user principle and use, be able to use it later on. So then what we're doing is we're just using the new QAD user. Now this needs to be installed. The Quest Active Roles Management or Manager snap-in. That needs to be installed uh, before you can actually run this script. What it does is it gives you extra commandlets to use to be able to manage your Active Directory uh, users and computers. So let's go, ahead and roll, let's go ahead and install this real quick. Now since you're on your server and you want to install this on your server, let's go ahead and open up an Explorer from the server. The link for this download is going to be in the description below as well. And use recommended settings. Now, since we're on the server, it's a little bit more secure. We need to do a couple, actually just one thing here. We need to add this site to the trusted sites. Otherwise, when you scroll down here and you select this check mark, you're supposed to be able to get a drop down right after this, and it's just uh, preventing us from doing that. So let's go ahead and go to Internet Options, Security, Trusted Sites. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add it. Close, okay, I'm gonna refresh the page. Scroll down, put a check mark, now you can download. So download your 32 or 64 bit, whichever um, whichever version you're running. I'm running 64 bit here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and download this one. I'm just gonna save it to the desktop so I can delete it when I'm done. It's an MSI file. Okay, our download's done. Now, when we go to install it, we're gonna get a little complaint here that you're dot, you need .NET Framework 3.1 or 3.5 Service Pack One or later. So, okay, when well you do that in Server 2012, let's bring up Server Manager. We're going to go ahead and uh, add a role and feature. Skip that page by default. Just go ahead and go next through all of this. Features. Now we're in the features section. So the first one here is .NET Framework 3.5 features. Go ahead and select it. Click next. Click install. This is going to take a little bit of time, so we'll pause it again. All right. So back to our script here. It's going to use the new commandlet provided by that snap-in, new QAD user. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm just passing along a bunch of parameters here, but I put them on separate lines to kind of clean it up, make it look easy. Um, use a little back tick here to. Uh, continue on that to the next line here. So the first one's going to be the name parameter, which it's going to grab anything that's in that pipeline from our spreadsheet and take the name field, which the name field is what you see in that header. Let me bring that up here. It's running a bit slow. So it's going to take anything in this name field right here 
So it's going to be right here. It's going to take this one, Travis Gardner, and um, use that and put that in its name field. Oops. Then the parent container, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to take the container field, which is right here, oops, this one here, which corresponds to this one, and it's going to put it in its parent container. Same thing with the same account name. It's just going to be taking the logon username. And same thing with the password. Now the password, I'm going to change this. Because I'm running server 2012, there's a little bit higher security requirements needed. So it's not going to be able to just use a logon name for most of those accounts. So let's just make it something crazy. Like crazy password. Now let's make it pass one two three exclamation point so we got exclamation point pass one two three and I'm gonna do like I'm just gonna put AH capital and it should be able to work with that if not we'll get some errors that's alright though so basically what it's gonna be doing is for each student they're all gonna have the same password now you can do something else where it's random passwords or do something you can do something else whatever your standardization is at your environment this is just gonna work for us right now first name field is of course, first name, last name is the last name. The okay, now if you have like a logon script, you can go ahead and add the name of that script right here. And uh, we're going to be doing that description. The description I just want to put in the graduating year, which is that you know 2013 or 2014, just to have it in the description. User principal name, uh, we're going to be using oops, don't move that. We're going to be using that variable or the contents of that variable that we created up here. It's going to be, you know, C Davis at PCA.hq. And that's going to be what sets that one field for us here. Okay. And we'll go back. Display name is the name. And that's going to be you'll you'll see where, where it's all going to be put. Now, after that, I also want to add that mem each member to a certain group. Now, let's look at Active Directory real quick. This I probably should have showed this earlier, but I created an OU called PCA OU just to store everything under there. I normally do that in any environment that I'm setting up. Uh, one is domain computers. We're not worried about that right now. And one's domain users. Under domain users, we got staff and we got students. We're only concerned with students at the moment. And under each or under the students, we have their corresponding graduating year. This is where all the 2013 students I want to be stored, all the 2014, all the 2015 students. Um, within that, there's some groups here. And like the reason I'm assigning them to groups is because I may do some custom um, group policy stuff and base it off of groups rather than trying to add each individual user to a, uh, a group policy. And it, it just, I like to work with the security groups here to assign different policies. So basically, this right here is going to go ahead and assign the proper group to the student depending on which year they're graduating. And then uh, down here, I had to put this on a separate line. I couldn't do it up in the top here, but um, what we're doing is setting the user must change password to true. So when the student first signs in to, the, to a computer, they're prompted to change their password. So they can't go any further unless they change their password. Um, and that's just used here in the set QAD user. Now, if you want to do other things like assign a home drive, that's pretty simple. I'm going to show you that after we're, we're done adding these users. I tried to get it to work here, but file permissions um, on the network shares for for your home drives did not get does not get set correctly because it's not the user who's creating that that folder so their permissions aren't being set properly. So I found the, the way this worked for me was setting up all the accounts via this PowerShell script and then going in here and manually setting their home drives all at once still. And I'll show you that, or at least per OU. So let's go ahead and run this script. Well, actually, before we run it, we have to add the snap in. So what you want to do here is, um, oh, you know what? We still got to add, we still got to install the snap in. So. Go ahead and go through this real quick. You know what? Uh, restricted to all sign. No, okay. There's also a thing where 
this is if this is the first time you're trying to run a script in PowerShell, um, there's a execution policy that needs to be set. If you haven't set it before, it's set to restricted. So you're not allowed to run scripts, and it's just a security feature. But what I'm going to do is set it to unrestricted. I think that's the one we set it to. I used to do remote signed, but I did some research, and supposedly that doesn't uh, really prevent anything from happening um, compared to unrestricted. So Okay, so first thing, let's go ahead and check this uh, execution policy. So if we do get execution policy, we'll see mine is set to restricted. So I want to set that. So we're going to do set execution policy to unrestricted. Just hit yes. All right. So now if we do another get execution policy, that's set right. So now let's go ahead and add that PS snap in. Quest dot add, I think it's active roles dot uh, da, 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 da. AD management. That's what it is. So now that that snap in's in place, what we can do is things like um, new QAD user. Oh, there's a computer, but we want to do a user. Uh, which is in our script, so we're not going to actually run it here. So now we're pretty much ready to run this script, and we're in the right directory. If we dir it, we can see that there's our script. We have our new users. So if we do add new users, hit enter, and it's looping through each object that's going through that pipeline and setting uh, what we set. It's kind of cool that you can see this because when I actually ran it live, there was a couple of counts that aired out and it's because they had uh, the exact same names so in those cases I had to just go in there manually add a middle initial um, and you could do all that kind of stuff with uh, within the sh script if you have tons and tons of users and you want to prevent that from happening but for the most part this is what this worked great for me so if I refresh each OU here you can see that they're all created they have a proper name with a capital letter in the front or in the beginning of both names under the description, you can see that um, that field got put in there too. So here, Brandy Pepper. So here's our description field. We didn't put anything in the address. And you could add all these into the script and the spreadsheet if you really wanted to. But um, here, the user login name got set properly there. And pre-Windows 2000 here. Uh, user must change password at next login. That's automatically checked. Under the profile, you can see we have the login script put in there. And uh, let's see, member of, also a member of the 2015 group. So pretty much everything is set, except for, let's say we want all these users here to have an H drive. As long as you have your network share out there and that's set properly, which I've done other videos on that, all we got to do is right click, you know, highlight all the users you want, go ahead and right click and go to properties. It's going to bring up like a limited properties window that allows you to change certain settings on a group of people or on a group of users or objects um, that's able to be changed. So in this example, what we want to do is go to profile. And let's say we want to add a home folder. And I'm not going to do it because I don't have it set up, but let's make it their H drive. And we're going to map it to, you know, server one, uh, share. And then this would be username. You want to use a variable here uh, that way on each one it'll pull that username into and, and create that folder and everything on the share and it'll set the permissions properly so once you hit OK it'll actually go through and set all the H drives all at once you know, that's, that's not as easy as just throwing in the script but um, it really wor it works a lot better than trying to put it in the script and set permissions so other than that that's pretty much it for this video I hope this actually helped you out again I should have all the files and all the, the scripts and everything on the site or in the description below. Check out the description. There's a couple links there, I'm sure. And um, don't forget to subscribe, share, and all that good stuff, if you would, please. And uh, comment below. Let me know what you think, if it's helped you out, if you have something better, because I'm always trying to improve my, my PowerShell skills. But um, let us know.